All right, let's test the used headways against the battery LAV60 cells, that battery pack that we did tested yesterday. This is about equivalent 60, 74 amp hours over here, and this is 64 amp hours. So we're gonna use this setup here, the same setup as we did yesterday. It's about, I mean, about 400 amps. Uh, this guy right here is gonna measure voltage, and then it's gonna have a timer and each individual cell voltage, and then this one's gonna be amps. So let's start the video here. That's recording. Let's start the timer. The only bad thing about this timer is that when this reaches zero, it resets. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. Okay, now let's do the loads. Okay, so 100, 200. Oh, more than 400. So look at that, 12.3. So already, I guess it's about the same as we saw yesterday. We'll put them side by side. Now, the only bad thing is that we can't see how much amps are in there because it's, it's exceeding 410 or 20, I think, that this thing will measure. Let's look at the uh, thermal now at 145. Okay, so the timer stopped. We'll start it again. Boom, there we go. Starting thermal camera now. Okay, so here we go. So those, those are hot because they're seeing a lot of the load. Now, I don't know why it's, this one's not seeing as much of the load. It's weird. Is it the same on that side? No, it's about the same. So there we go, the bus bar is starting to see some heat, but not a ton of heat. Cells are 98, the bus bar down there is at 106. Twelve point two, and we are uh, gonna be almost a minute, but then plus if you add whatever before the timer, and that well, I'll put a I'll put a separate timer up here so we can get an accurate. It's still putting 400 amps. Let me see if I can get the clamp to show the... Yep. <laughs> Let's see if we can take a, a, a load. Okay, there we go. So we just took a, a small load off of the end over there and now we're still at 400, exactly at 400 amps. Recording. There we go. One thirty-five. Those cables. Yeah. So you need more than three of those. These are really small cables. They're like six gauge. Yeah. You need, you know, two gauge. Uh, so these brackets will allow you to do two gauge. And of course, you can put bigger cables here. But that's just what I had laying around that one time, and that's why I built the. Uh, I had another setup with two extra cables and I think yeah four of these or five of these can do 400 amps but as far as three of these six gauge yeah that's a bit too much now here's the thing with that guy that was uh, saying that these bus bars were getting to 
you know, 300 degrees, 200 degrees immediately within 30 seconds or whatever. Like, well, where, where is that? How come our, how come my thermal camera can't see that? You got some special cheap, you know, gun that you can't seem to hold straight into a thing for more than two seconds. Like, of course, yeah, it's going to show erratic. Yeah, yeah, you don't know how to measure temperature. You, you need to better equipment, right? Now, I don't have the the most sophisticated equipment here. This is a really cheap, uh, you know, $400 thermal camera here. But look at those bus bars. I don't know, 121, and this is how many minutes into the test? What, 346 plus the other minute that we had? So that's four. That's gonna be five minutes right here, and it's at 1206. This battery is performing almost identical to the uh, LEV6. There we go. We're five minutes into this test. Uh, 12. Look at that. Okay, so just went under 1199. Okay, so let's terminate this test. Five minutes. So we got five minutes at 400 amps. And the bus bars got a whole 123. This one over here. Got a hotter at 140, but I think it's because of the cables. Again, these are small cables. If you use bigger cables, then it would be cooler over here. But the bus bar itself, 125, 125. Remember, this is carrying the current from here, these cells to those cells, right? So you're going to see the same over here in the bottom because it's doing the exact same thing, you know? So 125 at 400, you know? So do. An extra 100 amps, and you're going to see these at 135, maybe at 140 or something, which is the the top of what these cells can do. But they could totally do 500. Now, uh, this is a, a really small battery. If you're looking at the bigger batteries, well, you have more surface area and more points of contact. So it's going to run cooler, even with this same PCB, right? Just a bigger PCB. Uh, same thickness and everything. So that's why those are rated at higher amps. All right, just one quick uh, point to make here. Uh, these audio guys are being, you know, they, they have been misled for so long that they believe just blindly what these guys that are authority over there say, right? A lot of them are arguing that you can't use multiple cables like this, right? And I'm like, why not? What's preventing you? Like, I, I'm doing it. Why can't you do it in your setup? They're like, no, no, Bill, basically, because they told us not to. They tell us that it's not to. But it is. Look, this is 1.0 cable, right? And it was like our with 400 amps continuous for five minutes. It's around 160, 170 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. It's hot. This thing's running hot. Now, this 1.0, it's about equivalent to these three six-gauge uh, six cables or or eight eight yes these are six gauge cable um you see the thickness of three of these it's about the same right so even if you were to put a single one in here it would be the same the same hot the same temperature as these ones here because you've got about the same amount of copper removing 400 amps from this battery so you have to use multiple cables multiple 1.0 or zero gauge or two gauge, two gauge will do better. Three, two gauge will be more copper than this and will run cooler. But even even this giant 1L cables, right? You'd have to use multiple cables. And besides, it's not that hard. You got one coming from the alternator. You want you got one going to your loads, right? I at the bare minimum, so you got two cables. Um, you usually have two amps, so you can do it, right? So don't come to me with this nonsense that you can't do it. If you say that, I'm gonna call you an idiot, right? I mean, if you, I understand if you don't understand, uh, if, if you don't know about batteries or current or cables or stuff, and you're just being misled by those guys, right? But don't come at me saying nonsense uh, and then arguing with me that you guys know what you're doing. Like, but it doesn't matter how you slice it. If you're trying to remove 400, 500 amps of a battery, you're going to need several runs of big, thick cable or more runs of smaller, you know, uh, thinner gauge cable. Does, but it doesn't matter. You're going to have to run multiples. All right. So in conclusion, these batteries are very, 
very even. Uh, there's slightly differences. For example, like the fact that this one was running higher amps. Uh, I don't know why. I think maybe it's because it sagged a little bit more than these. And so as a result, halfway through the test, I had to disconnect one of the loads that I didn't have to disconnect in this one to remain at 400, right? So if the voltage goes lower, then the amperage goes a little bit higher. And it's just a tiny bit, right? It was like a 10, 20, I think it's like a 20 amp load. So, so this one was entirely from the very beginning running about 20 amps uh, a higher than this one and it's probably because of the voltage was a little bit lower uh but the thing is this one fell below uh the 12 volts where this one didn't but then again this one we ended up running a test uh past six minutes where this one i think it was closer to five minutes and then we terminated the test so again these are very very minor differences as far as cost goes well these are 24 cells if you buy the full uh 48 cell super beast from battery hookup these are used cells this is exactly what i did here i think you come out to like four dollars and 80 cents per cell so that'd be like a hundred and fifteen dollars something like that for the cells plus the bus bars you're somewhere around 150 but of course you'll have to get more than the cells you need because these are only 24 and you'd have to get like 48 cells so you basically have to get two of these ones to be able to get to be somewhere around 150. Now, if you buy them individually, they're more like $6.99 or $5.99, something like that, which puts you somewhere around $130 plus the bus bars that put you above $150. This one right here, it's $150 right now if you buy it like this and it comes with those bus bars, right? So it's very, very similar. They're within $20 difference between each other and they're about 20 amp uh, output difference, right? Uh, this one obviously is 74 amp hours. This one is 64. So this is more battery, more capacity. And maybe that's the reason why it could hold the, the voltage just a tiny bit higher uh, making the, the amps a little bit lower uh, going into your equipment. So again, very, very close close in, in capacity very close in price this is a good comparison not what that other guy is doing trying to compare a 20 amp hour cell that can do 250 amps for 30 seconds right that's not that's like apples and oranges this is a, a battery that is about the same size about the same power output his is like half of this and he's trying to say that it's better than this you know and uh, of course basically by saying that then he's obviously saying that is better than this he, he didn't actually say it's better than this but he's always saying that this one doesn't put out what i say it does right and you know uh the 600 amps for 10 seconds this is a rating that the manufacturer puts out uh i don't have the equipment yet to do it but as soon as i do maybe i'll do that test and try to confirm that it is maybe it's somewhere closer to 500 amps uh 10 seconds or whatever these are these have been in a pallet for about two years these are not brand new straight from the factory right they these are like overstock for some reason they didn't get used in their original intended purpose for whoever bought them so that's why we're selling them cheap these originally by the way a bmw battery uh these cost a thousand dollars right and it comes with a box and the bms and stuff but if you do the math you're paying like 200 250 i think per cell right that's what it comes out to where here we're you know, we're selling them really cheap, one hundred fifty dollars for the full thing, even even including the bus bars and stuff. So, right, so that's why you're getting such a good deal here because these are even though they're really good sales, you know they're two years old and they're out of the thing. Once these are gone, they're gonna be gone. You will not be able to get them like that. These ones, on the other hand, they have been around in this use form for a while i want to say battery hookup has been selling these for at least a couple of years and i asked him recently if he's going to keep getting more and he says that yes as far as he knows they are going to keep i think they're they were using something that was was big there's a lot of these that were used and so they're decommissioning those setups the original setups and that's why they're uh, becoming available in the second hand market these right here even though they're two years old they've never been used they are zero cycles right but they're they're a little bit old they're about two years of shelf life that they have in them and so of course they uh, they, they they do degrade but i think this degrade less just sitting two years of shelf degradation i think is a little bit less than um, a few years of actual use going up and down uh you know a few cycles or whatever but again these are 
lithium iron phosphate with five, six thousand cycle lifetimes and stuff. You got plenty of life in these. Uh, and for $150 or around $150 for each one of these, you can't go wrong. These batteries uh, ready made by some manufacturers cost up to $1,000, right, with these specs. So DIY is the way to go. That's why we promote it here. And that's why you, you should get one of these or you should get one of these. You take your choice, right? I don't care, but as, this is how you do it. Don't buy a ready-made battery, just build it. It's not that hard. I'm making it super easy with these bus bars and I'm really super easy with these bus bars. All you have to do is just come up with some, you know, a box. You could even do one of those pre-made boxes that the plastic, they could, they're literally like 20 bucks on Amazon and AliExpress. You could put it in there if you want to protect it. A lot of people do, do uh, boxes out of wood. Maybe in the future, I think, maybe I'm gonna make a steel box for this one with big bus terminals and stuff, but that's uh, that's coming up. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Hey, so I'm at the Peterson Museum. They have a huge Tesla exhibit and it's so weird to see one of these packs. This is the, the Tesla packs that we took apart in our shop so that we can put uh, Tesla batteries in my bus. A few years ago, 10 years ago? Probably about 10 years ago now. Um, yeah, we had a ton of these, uh, I think there's like 500 of these or something that they had to take apart. And so these became very common in, uh, at EV West and in my shop. And it's so weird to see them here at the museum, Automotive Museum, Peterson Automotive Museum.